Okay, there we go. Let's get that chat up. Sorry for the late start, everybody. I uh, would love to blame OBS in this case, but in this case, it was 100% my fault. I just thought it was OBS. <laughs> so anyway, let's get this thing going. So happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Um, <laughs> did not pay Swami for his 9 p.m. slot. Uh, Swami is going to be coming on in about an hour, going uh, live at about 10 p.m., and I personally will be watching him as well. I just uh, took advantage of the fact that he's going to be going an hour later, so I figured I would do a 9 p.m. Been really wanting to do a live stream for a few days now. I was going to do it on Wednesday, and I was going to do it on Thursday and Friday, and finally today. So um, thank you, Swami, for going a little bit late. Anyway, so... You guys like the hat? <laughs> Very festive. Um, anyway, I got a cool show for you guys. I'm going to try to pack this all into one hour. So let's get started. All right, we're back. So. What I've got here, there are five different Irish whiskeys. <clears throat> there are nothing, there's really nothing like particularly spectacular here. You know, there's no red breast or no green spot, but these are, you know, kind of tried and true. Well, these aren't tried, actually, these three aren't tried and true. True. Actually, friggin', these four aren't tried and true. Just tell them where do is. Um, either way, these are a little bit lower end Irish whiskeys, but based on the way that Irish whiskey is nowadays, where there's like very few actual working distilleries compared to how it was in the past. I um, think it's important to embrace the ones that have actually stuck around for a while and to explore some of the newer ones. So those of you who watch my channel, uh, which I'm guessing is pretty much all of you, um, are going to see a couple of familiar ones here and a couple of other ones I'll be highlighting over the next couple of weeks. So let's jump right into the Glendalock um, double barrel. So. Let's start off here. I'm basically just going to work my way left to right. So let's go ahead and pour this guy. Oh, look at that magic. Ha, ah, green. Yeah, all right, sorry. That was a bit lame, but I had to do it. <laughs> I, I detect a hint of artificial coloring in this. Hmm, yes, it appears to be a... Hmm, I'm going to go moldy hay color. Yes. <laughs> all right, so... Um, let me throw up some details for you guys so that you can see what I am seeing. Now this is the notes from my review. So uh, some of this should look familiar, but I'm just going to get right into the drinking. So happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you. Cheers. Or slancha. <laughs> I love that it's green. <laughs> I only thought of doing that like three minutes before the live stream started. Um, Anyway, so how's everybody doing tonight? Are you guys all doing well? The lighting is odd. Everything looks great. <laughs> You're an idiot. I hate you, Eric. <laughs> I love I love you, but I hate you. Uh, looks like Chicago River water. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm curious if any other uh, people have, have dyed their whiskey green today. I mean, it's such a pompous group of people, uh, myself included at times, that... Uh, tainting the color could could be conceived as a faux pas <laughs> so found myself writing a couple of episodes earlier today i'm gonna be probably presenting you guys with either like this friday i'm either gonna be doing the flaming leprechaun which is actually really good and um it's nothing like it's not you know top tier but it's surprisingly good especially for a newer one and then I'm going to do Tullamore Dew and the Tullamore Dew with the rum cask. So, um, what are you guys drinking tonight? I mean, you're all <laughs> creme de mint. <laughs> yes. You're all home on uh, St. Patrick's Day night. Nothing wrong with that. Are you guys drinking some Irish whiskeys tonight? Or are you drinking some Guinness? Or what are you doing? You dyeing your stuff green? <laughs> hey, I never know how to say your name, so I'm just going to call you Kenny. Hey, Kenny. Um, two, two Irish trash cans in. What is an Irish trash can? I'm going to guess it has something to do with a boiler maker, but I have no idea. Tell me what's in an Irish trash can. Putting dye in your whiskey is a mortal sin. You need to say 
three hail bro hail bookers. <laughs> What'd you guys think of that uh, Irish coffee video I did earlier in the week? Did you like that? I um I like filming little skit things like that too. It's kind of fun. I'm so freaking ta uh, what's the word? Campy though. Like you know I'm not an actor nor do I pretend to be. Never done anything like that. More just uh I found it funny so I did it. Let's see. We've got Bowmore Twelve. That's interesting. Um, Kentucky Bourbon Hill. <laughs> That's not Irish. Uh, no day, but green spot hit the spot earlier. Nice. Um, switch to Old Forester 1920 now. And Jameson. Good. Jameson's a tried and true on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, started with Guinness and switched to Teeling Single Malt and New Red Breast Lestau. Oh, I saw that one. I almost picked that up, actually. Um, but then I realized I haven't done my video on Red Breast yet. So, excuse me, no sense in uh, getting the newer one yet. Um, also, Tom! <laughs> That's pretty much how I say it out loud every time I see you in the chat. You and Santa. Let's see, we got vodka, gin, rum, triple sec, blue <laughs> curacao, Red Bull. Looks green when it's all said. And, oh man, that sounds like a mistake. It's like a it's like a Long Island iced tea, but wrongly put together. <laughs> Started today off with a six pack of Guinness. I like Guinness, but I always find it to be a disappointment. I'm really um, excited to try Guinness when I eventually go to Ireland, because my uh, my wife spent some time there in college, and she was like, "It's just totally different. There's there's no comparison." So, um, let me take down this guy. Well, let me talk about it a little bit. So, yeah, this bottle here is about thirty five bucks. I've met the owner or one of the owners, one of the co owners. He was a really nice guy. Um, so, in my mind, I don't mind giving him a little extra promotion if you want to think of that. Um, as always, I don't promote stuff. I don't think it's good. This was definitely my least favorite of the two of these, um, but we'll we'll get into that in a bit. So my glass is green. I'm uh, just gonna kick that one back so we can move along. I do not want to spend too much time on any of these. So, um, oh, nice. Eric's gonna be posting a video on the Teeling whiskeys. Um, they actually have a pretty cool, as you know, um, history, uh, Eric. So that I'm actually gonna make a point to watch that video. All right, so let's move our Glendalock off to the side here. Is it Glendalow or Glendalock? I always forget. I think it's Glendalock because it's about uh, a lake. So yeah, it'd definitely be Glendalock. Um, all right. So this one will not turn color. <laughs> Figure that, uh, that trick only is magical one time. Now I will tell you what is magical is this particular whiskey. I like this seven year quite a bit. Um, despite how little of it's gone, I've more just been busy drinking everything else under the sun. So let me move that over here. Wife and I went to a tasting last night and both brought the Jameson Caskmate Stout. It was ex excellent for the price. Ralphie reviewed the Glendalock 13 today. Nice. Jeez. I should have gotten my hands on that a little earlier. Um, what did he end up thinking about it, Gohabs? I haven't tried it yet. Uh, is that true? I might have tried it at a whiskey tasting, but I would have had a lot of other stuff first. So, <laughs> um, so Brian, uh, tell me about the cask Caskmates because um, I've seen a couple of those and I've been tempted to buy them, but... I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm just worried that Jameson probably wouldn't do it very well, but they've got the money to do it well, so I'm not sure. What do you, what did you think? I mean, you say it was excellent for the, for the price, but let's say you didn't really know the price. Like, is it something that you would drink again? All right, he liked it. Yeah, I've heard really good things about the Glendalock 13 now, especially the, um, I'm not gonna remember the word. There's a there's a second type of them where it's uh, aged in that like Japanese oak. Um, it's not Madeira, obviously, but it's something else. Uh, it begins with an M. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason I thought of that thing. So uh, let me get rid of this double barrel here. I feel like I'm going 100 miles an hour because I want to make sure I can fit everything into an hour. Um, so let's see the Glendalock Seven Year. We got 50 bucks. That is not what I paid for it. I paid close to like almost 30. I think I think I paid 25 for this guy and 30 for the other one, but they uh, they had just gotten introduced I think to Julio's Liquors down in Westboro. So they were having a, a much lower price. All right. So on the nose, he scored it at an 89. Hmm. Now I don't really ever watch Ralphie, so I don't know what his um it's <laughs> going on Swami. I don't really ever know what his uh, ratings are, you know, like my my experience has been anybody who rates whiskeys pretty much gives everything a high 80 or a low 90 <laughs> so it's like 
I hated this. It was utter garbage. 89. <laughs> or this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. 93. It's like, I don't know. That's part of the reason I go with the, the rating scale that I do. Um, all right. Let's see. Mizuna Mizunara. Thank you, Eric. That's that's what it is. I, I actually wasn't too far off. Like the old stout better than the IPA. I prefer bourbons, but I would put the stout in the regular rotation. Okay, that's good to hear. I will probably get my hands on some of that because I, I would like to fill out my Irish whiskey um, area of my playlists a little bit better. So let's see. Stouts are king? Yeah, I'm a big fan of stouts as well. I um, Actually, what did I have the other night? I had a porter. It was a coffee porter. Yeah, that was good. That was um, from a local local place, though, called Night Shift Brewery. Um, they're really good around here. I, I don't know how far they've gone at this point, but they have a coffee stout. Most coffee stouts are good because it's coffee and it's beer. Like, <laughs> yes. So been trying to brainstorm some new ideas for t-shirts because uh, one of the goals I set for myself this year was to basically have a store with stuff to sell um, specifically t-shirts ha maybe hats I don't know hats hats work for whiskey in the six and um, scotch test dummies I don't really think anybody's gonna walk around with a WD on their on their head <laughs> um, you know it's one thing to call yourself a whiskey dick on your shirt it's another one to just have it right up on your head so we'll see um, Anyway, I've got a, I got a few few ideas, but I might run some of them by by uh, some of my Patreons, actually, or patrons, um, only because they, they tend to be the ones that have a little bit of skin in the game, you know? Um, all right, so let's see. This guy, as far as the nosing notes that I had put down, the lemon is definitely more prevalent um, than almost anything else. Oh, that's right. This is the one I did the French vanilla um, little icon on with the uh, the scoop of vanilla ice cream and then the little beret and the mustache. <laughs> I forgot all about that. I'm going to have to go back and, and where you watch that. So. Hmm. So show of hands in the chat, how many of you watch uh, either Malted Montreal or Trini and C? I'm curious. Whiskey Dick Flashlight uh, would probably be as equally, um, equally as, what's the word? Disappointing <laughs> as my namesake. Hmm. Let's see, how many people we got in the stream now? I'm just curious. Uh, eh, 30, 31. That's interesting. I actually really kind of thought that I would have a lot more people um, doing this on a Saturday night. So that's actually good to know. Just more seems to be a core group of people who enjoy watching the live streams because, I mean, you guys recognize recognize each other's names at this point. Most of you are in every single live stream that the uh, whiskey tubers do. All right. So I am about out of this guy and uh, I'm going to go for a little something new here. Do, do, do. Okay. Um, I'm gonna grab myself a flaming leprechaun here. So the flaming leprechaun, now I got a story about this. I'm gonna get rid of this guy off the page here. Um, whiskey dick aprons, really? Whiskey dick, whiskey dick aprons. I wonder how I could make that like clever or funny or punny. All right, so let's see what we got here. Flaming leprechaun. Ooh, looks beautiful. <laughs> I lied, I totally had to do a second one just because I think it's funny. Probably won't do any more of those though. But um, I uh, had my in-laws come over today and poured them. They they are Budweiser drinkers, um, and uh, poured them both a, a beer with a little bit of food coloring in it without them realizing it. But they're both are well. The my mother-in-law is Irish, and um, you yeah, know it was appreciated. So anyway, so what I was saying. So Flaming Leprechaun is a company that gave me a bottle, and. You know, I'll bring that up during the, the review and everything. But as far as Flaming Leprechaun goes, I actually do really like them. So, you know, it certainly helps. Um, one thing that you guys don't see, but because you're my live stream viewers and it's fun to give you guys a little bit more detail into the way that things work on my channel than, than normal people would ever get. Excuse me. Jeez, I'm burping a lot tonight. Um, 
is that when I'm writing emails to distilleries, I generally tell them, like as soon as I kind of build a little relationship and they're like, yeah, we'll send you a bottle. I, I always tell them that you're more than welcome to send me a bottle. If I like it, I'll do a review on it. If I don't like it, I just won't do a review on it because I'm not going to bash people for no reason. But the the good news is that you'll never see me do a like a sponsored, it's not even sponsored, they're not giving me money. You'll never see me do a free bottle episode where I don't actually like it. So anyway, you guys saw I did the uh, Irish coffee episode with Flaming Leprechaun. So I like it. I think it's, um, I think the name has a little bit to, leaves a little bit to be desired only because I think it's targeting younger people. Something like Flaming Leprechaun just doesn't sound the same way that like Glendalock does or Tullamore do, you know, it's like, Flaming Leprechaun. It sounds almost like you would say, uh, like Fireball Whiskey, <laughs> you know. So, um, I like it. I just think the name is poor, but that's my opinion. Anyway, so I told them that I would do a review of it, and I plan on it. It'll probably be my next review, um, but we'll see. So, what I'm going to oh, uh, the whole point of this story. So, I'm going to be doing more episodes on smaller distilleries. Um, in the upcoming, actually, I, I hope as like a, like a newer part of my show, like I, I kind of hope to do random episodes on Wednesdays of smaller distilleries. And then the Friday episodes are going to be my larger distilleries, you know, things that everybody would kind of know. Um, just because I, I think that the, the smaller distilleries don't tend to get nearly as much traffic. Nobody's searching for it. But it's also, in my opinion, important for me to point those things out because I just love the idea of small business. I've you know, the, this whiskey thing, you know, it's it's a, a uh, what's the word? It's a business, but it's not really like a career or anything. Like, I'm never going to make real money doing this. But I have done other things in my off time where I've made some serious money doing it. And just in general, from my parents and from myself, I feel like I've got a bit of the entrepreneurial spirit in me. And because of that, I really associate with other people who take that risk and start their own business, and I want to try to help them. So if their product isn't utter crap, um, for example, um, what was the name of that? Mad River. Uh, Mad River Whiskey. Uh, I think they're out of Maine. So I tried them at this whiskey tasting uh, a few weeks ago at Julio's Liquors. And I mentioned to the, or I didn't tell them, but like I had had probably like not even exaggerating at least 25 different samples of whiskey before I tried theirs. And it was so bad that I actually like, you know, the woman was basically going to pour three or four of these things, or I think three of them. Um, and I just stopped at one. I turned around and I just was like, oh my God, this is the worst. I was with some other people too. And I was just like, they were, you know, making similar faces. I was like, like, this is bad to you too, right? Even as a, a newcomer. And they're like, oh my God, this is terrible. So yeah, I would steer clear of Mad River. Um, anyway, they haven't given me anything, so I don't feel bad bashing them. All right, let's catch up with the uh, chat here. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Flaming Leprechaun is the name of my favorite Irish pub in San Francisco. Neat. Yeah, I don't have any Jameson. Um, I actually just don't have any at the moment um all right let's see best irish whiskey what do you think about glenfiddich um cheers from belgium hey belgium <laughs> nice to see you uh glenfiddich 12 is actually i think the only one i've ever had and i like it a lot actually it's uh one of my you know beginner beginner scotches um as far as i'm concerned it's it's something that a lot of people could have as one of their first few few drams um, so as far as Glen, Glenfiddich 12 goes, I suggest it. I think it's good. Mm. Man, I had forgotten about that. All right, so let me show you guys a little bit. Um, I did a little bit of my own notes here. Um, these are kind of my first impressions, so I'm not committed to these. These would probably be close to what you'll see in the episode, but they're not necessarily written in stone. All right, so... The nose, you definitely get a, a little bit of the slight spice in the wood right off the bat. It is sweet. As far as the dry nose, so the way I would describe that is picture nosing something that was heavy on citrus and it, it's almost like, like the way that you salivate. If you, if I were to say like picture biting into a lemon, like the way that your your mouth would almost react to that thought, that's like a kind of, you know, like juicy, right? So that's almost like 
nosing something with a citrusy smell, I would describe as like a, a like a lush, full citrus nose. This has a dry nose in that there's almost, there's almost no, I mean, speaking plainly, there's almost like no moisture to it. It's, it's almost like nosing a, like a Shiraz um, or some sort of really dry red wine. It's just, there's nothing to it, but you do still get some nose out of it. Anyway, that's, that's the best I can do to explain it. Um, I hope I, I did a little bit of justice there, Eric, our uh, local sommelier. Um, anyway, so uh, let's see what we got. Let's, uh, let's take a, a sip of this. So one thing I really like about this whiskey is it's one of the first times that I've ever tasted peach in, in a whiskey. Um, I'm sure there's others out there that, that do it. But in general, it's, it's, I think it's one of the first times I've tasted that. So it's, it's very sweet, but it tastes like, it tastes like artificial peach flavor. Um, <clears throat> think like, <laughs> I don't know how many of you can relate to this, but if you've ever had like a peach dum-dum, like those little lollipops, it tastes a little bit like that, just obviously less intense. Um, you do have a bit of spice in there for sure. You get a little sting to the tongue. Um, the alcohol, actually, I'm curious, what is the ABV on this? Uh, 46%, yeah, so that makes sense. I had forgotten to mention that. And it's one thing I like about it is that even though it's a brand new Irish whiskey, they did it right by not going the 40%. You know, you see that on so many things and it's just like, man, what would this taste like if you just didn't water it down quite so much? Is it, would it be better, you know? Are you just doing it in order to release some special edition? Like, oh my God, tell them more 46%. It's, I don't know. Anyway, I, I really like this Flaming Leprechaun. I could see this, uh, I could see this being like, I would probably buy this like every other year or so um, and use it in some sort of, uh, like actually, you know, it's really good in that Irish coffee that I made. So anyway, all right, let's see what else is going on in the comments here. Drinking some Kilbegan single, single grain, and it's awesome. Um, yeah, go Habs, you know, I'm totally with you. I will often have a bottle of Glenfiddich, and prior to starting this channel, I used to always kind of keep that one around. Um, but I just, uh, I tend not to buy anything unless I'm planning on doing a review of it, which is almost like sad. Pretty much the only thing that I will consistently buy outside of Woodford Reserve is Booker's, and that's only because it's new batches. So, um, anyway. Oh, and Jack Daniels, because part of me still wants to pretend I'm in college. <laughs> uh, why is it black? It's not black, it's green. It's just, um, hmm, let's see. Where is, let's check this out. You guys ready? This is the kind of fun that you can do on a live stream. That's not going to work at all. Yeah, it kind of doesn't come across well. All right, never mind. Um, anyway, I put some green food coloring in for fun, so. <sighs> yeah, so I'm guessing a lot of you guys probably started off on Jameson as well. Um, as far as Irish whiskey, what was my first? My first Irish whiskey must have been Jameson. Was it? It actually might have been Glenfiddich. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's probably Glenfiddich Twelve. All right, uh, geez, oh my God, I'm being dumb. That's a friggin' scotch. All right, it's definitely Jameson. We, I'm getting the streams crossed and drinking way too fast. Sorry about that. All right, um, Johnny Walker Double Black, and my father got me a bottle of Glenfiddich 12 recently, and I don't know much about it. So you don't need to know much about it, Max. All you gotta do is try it, and if you like it, then that's great. And I promise I will end up doing a review of that one at some point during this year, because I've put that one off way too long. Go Habs, I only drink Jack Daniels when I'm mixing it with Coke, and it's strictly if I feel like getting drunk. You know, like there'll be a uh, really rough week at work or something, and then, you know, for whatever reason, my wife was awesome and decided to take good care of the kids, and I've just kind of got the night off. I um, will absolutely just pour like a, <laughs> like a, like, I've almost wanted to do a video on it because the way I pour my Jack Daniels is is ridiculous it's um all right so it's one of these glasses right and the jack daniels i'm not even kidding will be up to like here and then the rest would be coke i usually do like half a can of coke and then you know there'll be ice cubes in there but it's like it's really like almost 
bad, but it's delicious. <laughs> I'll do a couple of those and I'll be good. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Um, nice hat. Thank you, Whiskey Throttle. Cheers. Um, let's see. That is a waste of good... <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh i you know what it is i can't bring myself to mix good bourbon with coke because i've just started to appreciate whiskey too much that i've gone too far to the other direction where instead of enjoying my whiskey the way that i want to i f always feel like i'm being like judged which is a weird way to describe it but it's like I feel like if I'm drinking, I'm mentally taking notes for some sort of episode or for a live stream so I can talk intelligently about it or something. Um, but either way, I, uh, yeah, I just, I'll drink Jack and Coke and just kind of enjoy it. And, like, it's really not that bad if you put enough Coke in there. All right. Enough about Jack and Coke. <clears throat> so, um, let's see. Never really drank Irish whiskey. Neat. Just in Irish coffee, but Green Spot is pretty damn good. I have only ever tried Green Spot. I never actually bought a bottle. So whiskey music, I've seen you around a little bit lately. What's your uh, what's your deal? Uh, go ahead and you know fill the chat with your with your own little um, plugs if you if you actually have an active channel. I have no idea. You might just have a whiskey related name, but um, I should make it a point to check out your channel at some point. Started my whiskey journey journey with. Jameson and Tullamore do move to bourbon, but Irish always had in my stock. So David, what, uh, which Irish whiskeys do you stock or have you tried anything new recently? Drink what you like, screw what other people think. Yeah. <laughs> when you're, when you're literally on YouTube being like, Hey, I drink stuff. It's, it's tougher to have that attitude. Um, I do tend to drink what I like, but I also realize that I need to, I need to drink in a way that will benefit you guys so all right let me um let me put this one away here mm. another green glass <laughs> that's pretty fun you know it would be a very interesting thing if i were to take all five of these now i'm not going to do this at this point but maybe maybe another another review take five similar whiskeys and put food coloring in them that way i i just cannot tell the difference uh, from the, the visual cues and see if I could identify them. That would be an interesting way to do a blind tasting. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody approach it that way. So, all right, let's take the Tullamore Dew. And then actually, I'm pretty excited to get to this. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why, why are the tops, you might not even notice, why are the tops the wrong color? So here's the deal. And this is part of the reason I always get on screw tops. Um, and you guys, you know, occasionally in the comments will give me crap for, for giving screw tops a hard time, but watch this. I'm just gonna keep on spinning that, keep on tightening it, and it's just not gonna work. So, um, for whatever reason, this cap actually fits better on the, I hope that's not coming across awful on the microphone. Um, it fits better on the opposite one, so. That's why I have that way. That way. All right. So I'm gonna move on to the Tullamore Dew, which, as I mentioned earlier, I started writing my episode on today, and um, I did not know this. So little little tidbit. Um, if you've ever looked, the Tullamore Dew has you can't really see. Maybe you can. There's periods in between D E W, and it's um, I forget what the guy's name was, but I think it's actually let's see. Yes, Daniel E Williams. So that's what the Dew is for. Tullamore is the region of, or the area, I guess you'd call it, town of Scotland. Of, Jesus, of Ireland. <laughs> so used to talking about scotch. Um, so anyway, that's what the dude is for. It's actually the dude's, uh, the general manager slash eventual, um, like, owner of Tullamore, do. So he renamed it. It used to only be Tullamore. But outside of that, I'm sure there's going to be some more cool stuff I come up with. So let's pop into the Tullamore Dew. I got about 25 minutes left. <sighs> let's see. Oh, whiskey music. You play piano. Very nice. That's uh, the instrument I started on as well. Uh, moved on to the saxophone, and eventually, you know, years later when I started missing music, I just picked up a guitar like every other, um, you know, person who sucks or was never really fully committed to, to music, I should say. Um, 
Hey, Dwayne, uh, wait. Duvon, du I totally uh, can't pronounce, I'm sorry. Du Duvon, Duvon Wallace. Yo, D Wallace. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, I really appreciate it. Um, let's see, Crown Royal isn't half bad. I actually don't disagree with you, D. I'm gonna call you D. <laughs> so, um, you, uh, I, I don't disagree. I just think Crown Royal is underrated, un unfortunately. Now, the Crown Royal Rye is actually really good. Um, let's see what else we got. So, Green Spot is very nice, but not worth the price, in my opinion. Yeah, I almost bought a bottle the other day, knowing I was going to probably do a live stream pretty soon, but I, I couldn't pull the trigger. It was like, uh, even though, like, so on my video, as I mentioned, I found all the prices there from um, Total Wine, or was it Total Wine? I think TotalWine.com. Um, and it was 45 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever it was, but everywhere around me has for like 60. So now I see why people are like, oh my God, if you see it for 40 bucks, just buy like seven bottles and I get it. Um, but I've had trouble getting it. So, uh, do, do, do. my dad offered me crown Royal after dinner. I had a Coke instead. <laughs> um, wow. I missed a lot of chat. I'm sorry. Let me, let me go back here for a sec. Teeling whiskeys, I would definitely recommend them. Yeah, I mean, as you saw, or you may have seen, Eric, I recommended the Teeling whiskeys as a intro to, to Irish whiskey as well. Um, awesome logo. I, I'm actually very excited to kind of dive into Teeling and, and see what that's all about. I, I know generally that like they they were reborn and that was the whole Phoenix thing on the on the label. So anyway, all right, let's see what else we got. <clears throat> um, my ears are bleeding. Oh, is that from the... the I'm sorry. All right. Let's see. Crown Royal isn't half good. <laughs> You're also not wrong. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. So I got the rest of that. So let's go into the Tullamore Dew. And I will say that I'm sad that they they uh, stopped doing these in Crocs because the Crocs looked freaking awesome. And um, it kind of really stood out on the shelf. You got to... Like, whiskeys don't seem to... What am I trying to say here? <clears throat> a lot of distilleries marketing is so bland and, you know, like, oh, let's put a name that means something in the language of the whiskey and let's, you know, have, actually, this is a terrible example. It, it's more just marketing can do so much stuff. And if you really like, there's so much psychology behind catching someone's attention when you are branding something and or using text or like like typography is like super important when you're thinking about any sort of design it it's amazing to me that these marketers don't do more so like as i mentioned think about something like teeling whiskey the the label itself is awesome let me let me bring this up just for those of you that aren't aware because i actually just happen to have a picture of this sitting around uh teeling here we go All right, so here's a bottle of Teeling whiskey. So check out that that label. Like, to me, that catches my eye enough to look at it, and then at that point, it's tough to tough to really help the consumer decide to actually choose yours. But, I mean, maybe I'm just a nerd, but like the idea of a phoenix is always attractive to me. But they even have the the uh, you guys can't see my mouse cursor, but like the arc above the phoenix is like very nice um i don't know there's a lot about this bottle if you guys actually ever cared i could go into way more detail about why that's a good image anyway so um what was i getting to uh i forget what actually even started me on that little rant um whatever i guess it doesn't matter nice uh doo -doo -doo. I also started on piano, moved to sax, and then bass guitar. Yeah, so I played the alto sax. Um, screw caps just slightly th thicker than tin foil. Yeah, thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never mind, totally unrelated. Teeling single grain is great, and the single malt is really good. The small batch is a little sweet from there. Yep, blah, blah, blah. Tom, Tom knows his stuff. Tom is an awesome guy. I'm actually, uh, Tom and I, you know, I think, I think Tom and I are, are close, or we're, we're, we're tight. <laughs> so um i'm always sad santa cruz never shows up to my live streams i don't i don't know why um very very rarely shows up so bought crown royal bar bourbon mash 
what did you think? Um, oh, you haven't tried it yet. All right. I have never once heard a good thing about Crown Royal's bourbon mash. Boy, Eric, do you do anything other than write papers and research? <laughs> I'm very impressed at your life. You do a lot of, uh, you do a lot of learning, and I, I like that. Hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm drinking Tullamore Dew. Ugh. All right, let's throw some some notes up here. Now, I believe if I remember, I yes. All right, so <laughs> I got these notes from uh, whiskey the whiskeywatch.com because I have not yet formulated my own opinion of this, and I wanted to have something to put on the board here. And while reading this, um, no, I don't have it open anymore. Damn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is another one of those, like the other night where I was talking about smoke wafting through the cereal grains as it's overturned by it, whatever. Like, the way that this was written was so obnoxious. Um, I, I did cut it down to a much smaller amount here, but um, we've got boiled sugar, nut brittle, warm butter on toast, Specifically on toast, not not on pancakes or on uh, corn on the cob. It's got to be toast. <laughs> Grassiness, uh, buttered toast, and hairspray are the lasting impressions given. All right, let's give this a nose and see if we can get hairspray. A little uh, John Travolta <laughs> in there. Let's see. Oh, man. You know, I don't even hate Tullamore Dew, but I got to say the nose on this is not good. Hmm. It is definitely a step down from where I was going, though. Um, going, I should have started at Tullamore Dew. All right. I gotta say, I don't, I don't get hairspray. Um, I don't get butter. The grassiness might not be far from, far from what I'm getting there. Boiled sugar. I don't know. Honestly, I, I don't think I can describe what I'm getting out of this. It's really just nothing. Um, Hairspray is a, a play that uh, John Travolta did for a very short amount of time. He, he played the main character who was a woman. Um, yeah, I don't know. Never mind. If you really care, Eric, you can check it out. You'll see. I don't know. Man. All right. Anyway, Tullamore Dew is not that great. <clears throat> it is a good place to start, but once you've got any taste for whiskey, it's not a good place to stay. All right. Hey, Harry Wally. Thank you very much for joining. I'm uh, glad to see you're drinking some Red Breast 12. That's nice. And um, you know what? I've got no nothing, uh, no skin in the game, so go Leafs. Let's see. I don't have high expectations for Crown Royal Bourbon Mash. I suspected my brother-in-law will love it because of the name. Yeah, maybe. Um, if you ever want a good recommendation for a bourbon, let me know. Um, you'd be surprised how many people just like personally message me and ask me for recommendations. Funny thing happened last week. I, uh, I was on Malted Montreal show. I just randomly was sitting on my couch watching his episode. And um, once again, just for those of you who have come in late, uh, Malted Montreal is going to be doing a video or like a live stream with Trenny and C, both of which are my fellow YouTubers. And um, they are going to be doing a live stream directly after this. So I'm going to be cutting off pretty much exactly at 10 o'clock, and I would very much encourage all of you to at least go over there and check out his channel if you haven't already. I will be over there in the chat just hanging out. Um, I don't think I'm going to have drank too much to be doing any of that, and, and I think it'll be fun. So make sure you go over there. All right, so outside of that, um, yeah, I'm at 11,000. Yeah, I'm a big, I'm a pretty big deal. I think you all know that. <laughs> I got a two dollar super chat earlier. <laughs> That's I'm pretty excited about that. I didn't even have to bust out the bourbon or the Booker's, I should say. Oh my gosh, did you guys see? There's a new Booker's. There's a 2018. Um, a one. I'm really excited about it. Catherine's ba batch, I think. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm definitely gonna pick that up like as soon as I find it. I've I've already gone to a couple of stores trying to get it. I always like to try to be the first person on YouTube to review the new Booker's Batches. That's a personal goal I've set for myself. Mm. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> Swami doesn't go off the rails. He starts off the rails. I completely agree. All right. So I am on my last glass here. It's 945, which means I've got to 
um, either nurse this guy or possibly pour something new. Yeah, I know there's going to be a new Booker's. You guys will probably see that episode. Um, I would guess, like, I really want to keep March to, to, um, hold on, sorry. Push your nose before head blows up. All right, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I, I, let me finish my thought. I, um, have no idea what I was saying. <laughs> sorry. I, I actually promise you that's not the alcohol. That's, you guys have... Some of you, most of you have never live streamed. Live streaming is a really weird state of mind. You just flow from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. And if you have to go back, it's almost impossible to remember what the hell you were talking about. Then throw in drinking and it's literally impossible. Um, anyway, so, oh, the new bookers. All right, so I, uh, as I said, I like to always be the first one to do a review. And um, I will most likely be doing, well, I can tell you right away, the very first video, let me check the date. Pretty sure that the very first video of April, um, once again, because you guys are awesome enough to show up to my live streams and or watch it in the future. Um, actually, the first video of April will almost certainly be Glenn Murray, um, Sherry Cask. And then I think the second video on the 13th is probably going to be uh, a very special one, Bullet Bourbon Barrel Strength. So I contacted Bullet and I, oh, uh, let me let me tell you about that in a minute. Um, oh, Jesus, all over the place. All right, I will be doing Bullet Bourbon Barrel Strength. I actually contacted Bullet and I said, hey, it's like impossible to get this stuff outside of the um, Kentucky. So send me a bottle. And they said, sure. So I got a bottle from them. All right, let me tell you about what I just poured. This is a brand new offering from Tullamore. This is called Tullamore Dew Caribbean Rum Cask Finish. And this is a 43% ABV or uh, 96 proof bottle of Irish whiskey finished in XO rum casks. Now, Swami could tell you all about rum I don't know a whole heck of a lot about it other than that it's fun to drink <laughs> and it makes you feel like a pirate. But outside of that, I can't tell you a whole lot. Um, I do like this one so far. I didn't love it the first time I tried it, but I've grown to like it. And I will definitely make that note in my actual formal review, but we'll see where that goes. So let me, let me actually take a minute to do things properly here. Throw this up. Um, I did kind of take and take a whack at making some nosing and tasting here um this is about the best i could come up with let's see even like honestly i'm expecting my opinion of this to even change now and this is i basically drank this earlier and put down some notes so let's see all right um let's go ahead and know this nose this all right so the number one thing that comes across for me and hi dad and mom um is banana uh, which is a very rare thing. I've only ever really gotten that in Glenlivet 15. Um, pretty sure that was the one. It was either Glenlivet 15 or... Um, no, I'm pretty sure it was Glenlivet uh, 15. So you've got that. The honey is very subtle. It's it's in there. Um, it's that typical like stale honey that you might get in, in a um, very like a space side, uh, something more citrusy, but like with a little bit of honey, maybe maybe left over from the, the barrel. So I'm not getting the spice like I did earlier, but once again, you know, I've had four whiskeys already, so it's, it's definitely a bit duller. Um, the vanilla is not coming out as much either, but I am also getting some other citrusy fruits. Let me see if I can identify it here. There's a little bit of orange behind the banana there, but not a not a ton. I um I think this one's a bit unique in that it's got that banana uh, nose. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a taste. And uh, since my parents jumped in the chat, cheers to mom and dad. Hmm. All right. So. Banana comes across very, very strongly, actually. That's cool. Um, that's as interesting as that peach that I was telling you about earlier from the Flaming Leprechaun. That's interesting. I um, I didn't even get it this strong earlier. So uh, let me pause for just one sec. 
Uh, have you tried the Hyde Irish whiskey? I have heard great things about that. I have not. Um, whiskey music, I can't answer that very well yet. Uh, but I will try to give you some sort of answer. If you, if you ask me again, even write me an email. I'll, uh, I'm sure I can get you a, a, a solid answer to that. Um, Thewhiskeydick at gmail.com. So Glenwood 15, French Oak. Yep. Um, had bullet barrel strength last night at the local store. Tasting very good. Didn't buy yet. It's on a list. I think you should buy it, Brian. It's definitely going to get, well, I should already say this, but like I've already filmed it and it got a kind of like a confusing rating. If you're capable of buying it, I definitely recommended that people buy it. If you're not capable of buying it, then there's places online to get it and it would be something I would tack on to an order I was already planning on placing, but I would not place an order just for this only because of the shipping cost, in my opinion, made it not worth it. So I think it's like a $50 bottle, but if you tack onto that like $20 to ship it because it's alcohol and it takes a lot of time and whatever, um, that makes like, a, it's not a $70 bourbon. There's basically no $70 bourbons in my mind that are worth it other than bookers. <laughs> so, all right. Um, do Irish whiskeys disclose the percentage of malted and non-malted barley? Not that I've run into, but actually, come to think of it, I hadn't even thought about that, but I haven't run into a mash bill on any of the Irish whiskeys that I've done reviews on. I'll have to pay special attention to that. Um, good call, David. Um, all right, let me, uh, great, we'll have the time. Thanks, anything else? Um, well, I mean, there's a million places to go on the bourbon trail, and there's also tours. I would suggest doing a tour because they're going to tell you where to go. Um, maybe plan for a longer trip than you might want to take. You know, it might be one of those things to, to actually put a couple extra days on your vacation than you normally would want to. Um, that would be my suggestion. If I were taking a specifically whiskey-related bourbon trail trip, I would probably extend it because one thing that you got to consider is that if you're legitimately going out and doing a bourbon tasting trail, like you're probably going to feel like crap the next day. You know, it's, it's almost a definite. So you might need a day or two to recoup and then possibly jump back on and go, go taste some more stuff. All right. Anyway, let's see what else we got. <laughs> Don't drink and drive. Yeah, no, hire yourself a limo driver, really go all out or, uh, you know, get a bunch of friends and get like one of those limo buses and just be drunken idiots on it. That sounds like fun. All right. Let's see what else I get in the, the taste here because I've talked at length and don't remember what the heck I tasted. So cheers once again. Hmm. So the crisp apple is, is there. Once again, the um, banana is there. I'm not sure what other fruits I'm getting. I'm not getting the orange the way that I could kind of get that in the nose. I'm not tasting that at all. Um, yeah, I think this one is, is just interesting in that it's got banana and that's a very rare thing to get in a whiskey. So, um, let's see. Hey, whiskey untitled, <laughs> whiskey untitled. Couldn't quite commit, huh? <laughs> um, let's see. I did video reviews with photography on my channel. Eric, I really got to make it a point to go through your backlog. I only just started following you like maybe a month and a half ago. All right, let's finish this guy off and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to, whoops. Oh, that's why. Move this over here. I have six minutes left, which is more than enough time to do this. And or one more of whatever you guys would like. So let me know what you think I should have another dram of and we'll spend the next six minutes just kind of shooting the shit and waiting for Swami to start his stream. Uh, my opinion on Crown Royal, I think it's a great place to start. There are apparently a lot of decent Canadian whiskeys. However, most of them don't export, which to me sounds like why, why can I believe that there's a lot of good Canadian whiskeys? Maybe I need to go out of my way to, to contact the distilleries and try to get a hold of them but a decent amount of whiskey um whiskey tubers like um obviously malted in montreal and there, there's a couple of other ones they get a lot of canadian whiskeys and they tell me that there's good ones up there but i haven't had a whole lot 
either way, Crown Royal is dependable in the way that, like, Johnny Walker Black is dependable. Or, I don't know, um, what would be... I mean, I guess Woodford Reserve, but I don't want to compare it to that one because that's my, that's my favorite. <laughs> you guys want me to have bookers? <laughs> I didn't bring the bookers out, and I've gotten two dollars in super chats. You guys, you guys haven't earned it yet. Um, nah, screw it. All right, I'm gonna go get the bookers and a glass. I'll be right back. You guys suck. And I'm going to hide the Telemore Dew. <laughs> you guys, you like ruined my whole little uh, setup here. You made me drag the bottles in front of my fairly sensitive mic just to tell me to drink Booker's. All right. Ah, boo. Now well, that happened. I guess I'm stronger than I look. All right, that's fine. This O3 really needs to drain anyway. I basically only ever drink it when I'm on camera. Um, take a shot of, shot of rubbing alcohol. All right. Let's see. So, Dad, tell me, is, is Mom watching too? Only because I, I definitely want to think that my mother is proud of her son. <laughs> Which, knowing the way that you guys uh, party... My parents party harder than, like, pretty much any 20-year-old I've ever been or met so um you know i guess there's that <laughs> also as i mentioned earlier they're they're successful entrepreneurs as well so um they deserve to to let loose it's not a not a critique <sighs> all right what is what is boo saying our bod that didn't take a whole lot of arm twisting no it really doesn't it never does it never does um, all right, so let's see. I've got three minutes left. I'm going to give a cheers. What do I want to do? I guess, first off, give a cheers to D for contributing via Super Chat. I appreciate it. I, uh, have, I don't think I've even ever seen your name around here, so I appreciate you coming in and being awesome and Super Chatting. So outside of that, let me see what else do I want to do. I want to thank all my fans. Hmm, yes, I... Uh, the producer, the, um, oh, uh, little Johnny, he was, uh, Johnny's a good guy. I have no idea what I'm talking about. All right, cheers. I also never watch, um, never watch award shows, so I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. I may be in Boston the week of June 13th to take an exam. I'll know for sure at the end of the month. Let me know, Eric. We will absolutely hook up. Um, I'm about 40 minutes away from Boston, but I will make that ride out to meet you because that sounds awesome. All right, um, let's see. This is a cool glass. I had forgotten about these. So these are, do you remember that uh, Globe Decanter episode that I did? I really like that decanter, actually. I'm using it for my infinity bottle, essentially. Um, <laughs> but uh, sing an Irish song. Hmm. Bookers and hookers. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know any Irish songs. Well, I do, actually. Uh, but I am not a good singer, so I don't think I'm going to sing. Haven't had enough yet. If you guys had me on a two-hour live stream, I might do that. Um, all right, so let's do this because I've got about a minute left, and I really want to make sure that I'm, I'm a good guy to Swami. I don't want to keep any of you guys here any longer than, than I said I would. So I've got more than enough of this. I'm going to kick this back. I'm not doing a jig whiskey music. <laughs> As I said, get me on a two-hour stream. That might happen. All right, I'm going to kick this back, and I'm going to join you guys in the chat over on Malta on Montreal. So cheers to all of you and all that bookers I just spilled on my table, and uh, I'll see you in a couple minutes. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's stop streaming and cut.